Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. Today, this is going to talk about uh, this cellular division animation people asked. It's basically using Remesh modifier, and the core concept does not yet need to use animation nodes. Firstly, I will explain the principle, and then I will discuss why I need the animation nodes to improve this animation. So, let's start. So, firstly, when we usually talk about the cellular division, um, what we are actually going to do is to use the metaball. So now if I generate a metaball, then I have a very smooth sphere. And if I just duplicate another one and try to move that, you can see uh, metaball has its kind of inherited ability to um, mix with other metaball. And you can just duplicate them more and so on and so forth. However, um, its surface is kind of too smooth. And usually in such kind of case, you might think, okay, I would like to have a displace modifier. And you try to look at the tab, you can find there's no such a thing at all. So the only way to actually make the surface kind of uh, not smooth is to use the shaders, if I were to say. But uh, if I, you were going to render with EVs instead of cycles, then displacement won't work. So you have to find alternatives. And this is the entire point for me to make that animation using alternative method. So let's delete everything. So here I'm going to tell an, an, uh, an alternative method which uses the remesh modifier. So if I generate a UV sphere, so now I have a UV sphere, okay? And I'm going to go uh, hit the tab and go through the edit mode and add another UV sphere. So now they are overlapping. It looks like they're just the one UV sphere, but it's actually two. And I'm going to go to the Mesh tab and add two shape keys. One is the basis, the other is key one. So by selecting these key ones, I'm going to deselect everything and then select one polygon of the UV sphere, hit L, so that I only select the linked, link the object, or basically connected object. So basically one of the sphere. And then I'm going to select the other UV sphere and move that to right. And now if I go to the if I uh, exit the edit mode, you can see everything goes to the basic shape keys. But if I try to change these values, then they start to separate due to these shape keys. And in this case, they still do not really see any linkage as the metal wall. What you can do in this case is to actually calculate the volume of this um, to uh, this geometry and try to get another new geometry which is called a remesh. So by looking at this remesh modifier, so if I hit this remesh modifier, you can see the volume is intersecting. But now if I remesh at them, then they become true linked geometry. So this is the point of remesh. More information can be found from the menu, essentially. Uh, but basically, the idea is if you try to decrease the voxel size, it becomes more accurate or essentially more subdivided. So 0 0.05 then you get a kind of more mesh and whatever stuff. Uh, there's essentially other options, but the one important thing I would like to remind you is these smooth shadings. So normal shade smooth won't actually work, but you need to try on this smooth shading. And on top of this entire thing, it's possible to add uh, even more stuff. For example, the displace modifier, and then let's add a texture. Uh, what we can do is to add a cloth and you can increase the size and even the volume noise or I think you can actually add a displace before so that you can avoid the kind of info issue of this kind of intersection and then you can even add a subdivision surfaces or whatever stuff but basically this is one kind of idea to do uh, basically this is kind of idea to achieve such kind of result of a cellular division. So basically this is the principle, but uh, I suppose you do realize a fact that this is not really parametric. So it's, uh, you basically change all the parameters using the, uh, the using uh, using the modeling functions, but I don't know how much I actually move. It's not uh, as m very accurate and straightforward as using the transform data where you cannot use. Uh, I mean, it's possible that you can possible snap uh, that's so that it becomes more accurate, but it just kind of feels very weird.
So that's why I'm going to use animation nodes. And I'm just going to generate a UV sphere. So first let's hit Ctrl A and type in distribute the matrices. And it depends on what you actually would like to do. Maybe firstly I just want like to have two X to stop on the axis. And there is a preset in the past I mentioned, it's called instancing object. Um, you can also download the preset library from the link in the description, but this is just the one way. I'm going to break that down. So it's basically a object mesh data. Object mesh data node and the transform mesh. Basically just these two nodes. So if I put the mesh into the mesh, matrices into the matrices, so although it's called a transform mesh, but it can actually also duplicate the mesh. In this case, I'm just going to generate a UV sphere. And finally, I'm going to output this object, which is called object, uh, yeah, basically this is it. So now I have, if I disable the original sphere, and uh, this becomes a parametric that I can move, and I know the value of its separation. Basically, the distance between two sphere is five meters. So now I have two sphere, and one important thing you do realize it's actually a single mesh, which is called a target, or a single object, which is called a target. And in this case, you just do the same thing as the remesh modifier, and you basically solve that, and you increase the subdivision. So finally, you have the cellular division. So this is one way or one kind of thinking to do all these kind of things. And it can definitely go beyond to make more kind of interesting animation depends on uh, your specific setup. Uh, it's definitely possible to um, get more functions or more kind of interesting animations. For example, take a random vector. I'm going to set multiple vectors. Uh, if I put the vectors into translations and immediately I get kind of Random back, uh, random distribution of all these sphere, and you can animate this scale. So initially, they comes from a single sphere, but later they can be separated up using this new scale. Uh, it's even possible that you use a vector wiggle instead of a random vector. Basically, do the same thing. And let's take a vector form value. So that I control these three amplitude at the same time. And then the advantage of using vector wiggle is you can animate its evolution. There's also many other options like use the close packing so that it avoids intersection by the end of the day. It's possible that you control everything using fall. I think it's a little bit beyond the scope of discussion today, but basically this is idea. The whole point to, to use uh, the animation node method instead of traditional methods or like using the metaball is still you can use actually the uh, displace modifier and add textures, goes to clouds, increase the size. So you don't have a um, smooth surface and it's definitely controllable and so on and so forth. The only issue that may potentially rise is that um, the displays can only go at, um, let's take a controller, can only go one direction, it's not a 4D noise. This is kind of issue that you may think. Um, and uh, to solve that, there's essentially ways to solve that using animation nodes. But uh, it's kind of, uh, so it's possible to use animation nodes to create a 4D noise, I think. But it's uh, kind of another topic that I'd, I don't want to discuss that um, in this tutorial. So, but uh, I think uh, so far this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.